What's going on YouTube? We're back at it for another video. Today we're going to be talking about those underrated weapons and some of those meme guns out there that I consider it a meme, but the reason I'm making this list is possibly you're looking for a break from the breaker. Sometimes you want to try something else, shake up the gameplay a little bit, don't want to be stuck with just a shotgun all the time, and well, there's more than a few weapons in this game that have a few tricks up their sleeve that you may not have known about. And when it comes down to the weapons inside of this game, it is a co-op game. And first and foremost, they focus on co-op, so a lot of these have like a supporting attribute to them. A lot of them are balanced based on not the fact of sheer damage, but their capabilities of being mixed in with group combinations. Some may be found to be lacking in certain departments, but in coordination with other team members could actually start to shine a bit more when it comes to their usefulness in certain aspects. And we'll divulge in those aspects as we go along. Because the ultimate point to be made is it's a game to have fun with. Doesn't matter what weapon it is. Now some of them, yeah, they'll be less useful and this particularly one of them I probably would never use. But the rest of them can have some features and some of them are better suited for one side than the other. But we'll get into those details here soon. So let's get straight into it. Coming up first in our underrated weapons is going to be the Jar 5 Dominator. Now, with the Jar 5 Dominator, we do get some medium armor penetration and a hefty amount of damage with that, but at the cost of some pretty serious recoil and a bit of a lower capacity magazine. Now, it is going to be a single fire weapon, and you can use this against the Terminate, but I am going to say that it is not exactly the best suited for the Terminate side of things. Considering it does have a bit of hefty recoil, I will highly suggest crouching if not aiming down sights in the first person perspective this seems to cut down quite a bit on the actual overall recoil looking down through that red dot does not bounce as much as it will in the third person perspective it can bounce quite a bit in the third person perspective even while crouching and it can be a bit irritating to control in certain instances where you may be spamming that trigger so trigger control is going to be quite necessary with this weapon to make the most out of it. But when it comes to facing off with the Terminate, the most irritating thing is the simple fact that there is so much trash everywhere, everything is bum rushing you, it's only 15 rounds, 15 rounds in the magazine, and on top of that, you'll more than likely get stuck on reload in more instances than you'd like to, almost as much as you will with the Breaker, but not having the same clearing power as the Breaker. It does have a hefty punch to it, and that medium armor penetration can make it through those bloaty bug armored variants with the acid, as well as those little rude thingies that have the armor on their legs and or front legs and their face. But it does seem that the damage diminishes in my personal opinion. Please let me know down in the comments if you're feeling the same about shooting with the medium armor penetration, whether or not it feels as though the damage isn't going the full 200 in those instances, and especially when it comes to the armored variant of the bloaty bug, it almost feels like I'm better off shooting with the Dominator in the side weak spot of the back of that bloaty bug rather than just directly in the face and being able to kill it quicker in those instances. I'm not sure whether or not that's the fact that this is an explosive round and that has that 100% total full damage going up against the weak spot on the side of it or if there's possibly a double dip of damage where this penetrates and then explodes so we're having two different damages ending up happening in that scenario whereas we don't have that while it's doing the penetration power through the armor. I'm not 100% certain on this but that's something to look into a little bit later. But where this weapon really shines is on the automaton side of things. This is where I prefer it, and this is where I was using it before I ended up with a different weapon that we'll talk about later on in this list. Now, on the automaton side of things, this is going to one-shot not only just the uh, little humanoid bots every time that you just aim this over there, boom, boom, you're going to be putting them down pretty quickly. But at that same time, if you're aiming for the face on some of those medium bots, you're going to be taking them down in one shot. It's going to be quite nice, and when you land that shot, it feels pretty good. I wish this weapon had a little bit better of a zoom to make this even more efficient but a lot of times if you're aiming down sights and you're doing it in the first person perspective from behind some certain cover as we do know those rocket devastators are absolutely insane in certain instances and so are the gatling lasers you want to make sure that you've got the capability of being able to land that headshot and not getting jabbed by a laser or a rocket and ragdolled if not just throwing off that aim entirely you're going to need to make sure your shots count with this one but when it does count ooh, you're cleaning them up pretty quickly and as long as you can keep your trigger discipline controlled you should do fairly well with this weapon against the automatons especially at keeping them at a distance maybe not the largest distance considering it doesn't have much zoom to it but if you're somebody that has that eagle eye you're going to be landing some shots with this one you're going to be taking out a fair bit of those devastators and quite easily 
Coming up after that, we've got our first meme weapon, which is going to be the SG-225, i.e. Breaker Incendiary. Now, this is one of those fan favorites down in the comments, man. There are people that are die hard for this weapon, and buddy, you are a 100% a dedicated crowd control with this one for cleaning up the literal trash. This is for the birds. I'll tell you right now, this is one of those weapons that sure enough, it's going to be killing through those terminate of those smaller variety from the ticks to the grasshoppers. But even then, you're going to be wasting all 25 of those shots to make sure that you're cleaning up a lot of that stuff. Big issue I have with this is the simple fact that it doesn't do well against medium sized enemies such as the brood warrior and other things that are bigger, especially a stalker as well. You will need to be up close with them. And thankfully, with the stalkers case, you know, they do run up on you, but you still end up depleting this magazine fairly quickly. And a lot of people talk about the damage over time with this one, the fact that it lights everything on fire that it touches, even heavily armored enemies. The damage over time is not that great. It is something that can end up finishing off certain enemies, and sure enough, it works out really well for the smaller enemies, but not so well when it comes to the bigger enemies as you're going to be peddling, or you're going to be pelting them with so much of this bird shot in order to make sure that that last little bit of damage that finishes them off is that damage over time. This is the truest definition of spray and pray, and it has its place when it comes to a dedicated crowd control person. And this is a meme weapon 100% because I would love to see a four-man team running this and there's just birdshot everywhere. Like coming through full-on flame build, like this thing has a place for it. It is something I would find to be so much fun against the Terminid. Just four of these incendiary breakers just going crazy on every crowd. I feel like in that situation, it works really well because you're all compensating each other with that overall damage of 180, where instead, if you're just the only person dealing this 180, you come off a little bit lackluster unless it's anything that's a smaller creature. For the love of God, just stop trying to use this against the bots. I have seen comments that try to tell me that this has some type of crowd control effect on the bots where it stops them from firing, and I've tried this. It does not. It's not doing that. It's not doing that great against it. It is really, really lackluster against the automatons. I would highly suggest not using this on that side of things. This is a terminated, full-on crowd control weapon, and it's fun to use. No doubt about it. Don't be ashamed to use it, but don't act like it's overpowered. And if you think it's overpowered, you can let me know in the comments. Coming up right after that, we've got the SG-8S Slugger. Oh, buddy, this one is a devastator against the devastators. This is something that is going to stun lock those bots, and I love it. I love every bit of it. I wouldn't say it's that great against the Terminid. It is still a pump action shotgun and it is a slug. So it is a very tiny shot and it is not great at crowd control. I'm not the biggest fan of this. And anybody that tells you this is very good against the Terminid, you just try facing off with a stalker or a, a brood warrior or anything else that is uh, of the medium size quality. It doesn't end up taking it down that fast and I'm very disappointed in that fact. I don't know why it is. It feels like it takes way too many slugs to take down some of those enemies and it doesn't feel like I'm getting the full 280 in those instances. But since it doesn't have crowd control capability and then it doesn't end up doing very well against medium sized bugs, well there's not really a full reason to put this as a primary against the Terminant. But when it comes to phasing off of the automatons, being able to stun lock those devastators is everything to keep that rocket devastator from ever even firing off one rocket or even using his arm to shoot you with a laser and also having the capability of one shotting them if you aim for the face you can even snipe with this weapon from a good distance it is a good bit of fun and i love every second of being able to just stun lock those things considering how many times i've been ragdolled by a rocket devastator oh buddy it's always payback with this one and i love it and it does have the capability of medium armor penetration, even though that it says that it doesn't. So there is something to that, but I wouldn't really lean into that heavily. It's not a big aspect of it. The biggest aspect of this weapon is that capability of just stun locking those devastators and having the one shot capability on the automatons. Coming up next, we've got the next meme weapon, which is the P4 Senator, a fan favorite, man. There are people that are diehard for this weapon down in the comments, and they swear by it. They have an allegiance with it that is unshaken. There's no doubt about it. These people are, uh, well, they're having fun. Look, and I'm not going to put you down for it. I won't say this is the best weapon, but it's definitely a viable weapon. Now, in the future, hopefully, they end up 
putting something in that possibly has like uh, I don't I don't necessarily think attachments, but something that's similar to the first game where we have perks that we can actually upgrade these with, possibly paid through by war bonds or I mean war medals or requisition slips to upgrade each one of these weapons to have a further benefit that possibly has something of a speed loader with this one where we have one of those cartridges that's already filled with the six rounds that we can just toss those old shells and then slot it in in one click motion. Now, this is something that I would never see being overpowered for this weapon but it would make it a lot more viable especially considered or considering compared to the redeemer. I mean you're getting about 1800 damage every time with one magazine from the redeemer whereas you're only getting 900 damage in total out of the senator each time you're spitting out those six rounds which it will fire fairly quickly but man reloading one bullet at a time as compared to being able to just pop in another magazine for the redeemer and have another 1800 damage popping out with that thing i mean in one fourth of the time it's it's almost a no-brainer but for those of you that want to enjoy a different play style and want to have something for a secondary that sure may you know with each round hit a little bit harder but you want to have something that you know just it suits your play style this is something I, it's it's hard for me this is a role play moment and it's hard for me to do anything else that's why i consider it a meme weapon as it's viable because it deals damage but at the end of the day it's not the best damage dealer if you want to be efficient the redeemer is the choice but if you do want to have some fun, this is definitely right there for you. And I wish there was an emote animation where I could spin this and after finishing off an enemy, just blow the smoke out of the barrel. Arguably, I'd probably really like to see that for every gun in the game in a sense. But at the same time, I'd rather the devs work on additional content over emotes any day. But also one thing to add is it does have medium armor penetrating. Even though it says it has light armor penetrating, which is confusing in this game, there's a multitude of different weapons that end up doing this, and it's, you know, I, part of the joy in this game is playing around with these toys that we get, these guns that we get, and figuring out the benefits and strong suits of what they are capable of. So I can't, uh, I can't fault them for not trying to overcomplicate with stats that just are way too much and overall ended up being like an excel spreadsheet instead of being that magical moment where you just start utilizing the weapon you think it's good and then it gets even better when you find out what it is actually capable of you can't go wrong with having those magic moments in games and that that thrill of the wonder and finding something undiscovered there's something to that whether you're a content creator or not that moment is something to truly be enjoyed in any game so sometimes when they go for simpler stats and they don't overcomplicate it and tell you every detail about it, it ends up benefiting the game overall in the coming future. So this is arguably one of those moments and it's probably one of the reasons a lot of people use this and end up considering it a bit better than it should be because they've had those magic moments and they've gotten a, a little bit attached to it. And I can't blame you for that one. Plus, there's nothing wrong with having an affinity for revolvers. I'm right there with you. If there was a lever action rifle in this game, even if it sucked, I would love that gun. Coming up right after that, we've got two underrated weapons that I feel are pretty strong suited for the automaton side of things. But one of them can be decent against the terminated side as well, which is going to be the diligence. Now, the diligence is arguably the better of the two, in my personal opinion, considering it has much more control when I work with the Diligence Counter Sniper, it feels like it has this massive sway and lag to the aiming on it. Even while I'm aimed down sights in first person perspective, I prefer the sight on the Diligence Counter Sniper. But overall, when it comes to the control of the weapon and the stability of it, the regular Diligence just is far superior in both aiming down sights and in third person perspective. It is by far tenfold much easier to control as well when it comes to the overall recoil but the drawback with the original diligence is it has to two shot the medium bots the devastators if you hit them in the face and sometimes it's not easy to get that double tap on the face especially if they're firing back from you and you don't have much of a good position for cover it can be finicky and i'm not a huge fan of the actual sight on this one it can be difficult to line up that shot in certain instances but with the diligence counter sniper you can one tap each one of those devastators and that can be extremely beneficial for you if you can get over the sway and the bobbing and the, the lagging motion of just moving with this weapon and aiming it it just feels 
ridiculous to me. I'm not a huge fan of it. But when it comes to stopping power, the Diligence Counter Sniper ends up being just above, apparently, I'm guessing, like, the damage difference is so minuscule, but somehow it is so massive to the point where it ends up being that one tap. I'm guessing that the health on that one headshot is somewhere in between that 112 to 128 and that diligence counter sniper just ends up pushing it just over the top to finish off each one of those devastators beyond that point when it comes to being pushed by enemies or being stuck in certain situations especially if you're facing off with terminated and you want something that's good for distance but at the same time can be capable with enemies that are rushing you including smaller enemies the R63 Diligence is going to be your better bet, in my personal opinion. Has much more control, has much more ammo, and it's still a devastating force. But that's going to be it right there, guys. That's going to be all of the underrated and meme-quality weapons that can be viable options besides the Breaker. If you're looking to shake things up, take a break from the Breaker, have a little bit of fun, you know, you can't go wrong with trying out a few of these weapons. They do have some attributes to them that can be useful in different team combinations, you know. But hopefully you've enjoyed this. Hopefully I've given you a couple of keynotes that could possibly change up, you know, the playstyle you may have in the future. Give you a little bit of refreshing... Uh, playthroughs when it comes to changing up what you may be using from match to match and have a little bit more fun with the game as we get closer and closer to some of these uh, other stratagems coming in the future. I mean, I'm sure some of you guys have seen the mech footage and the vehicle and some of the other weapons that they've been talking about and I'm kind of I'm thinking it might be March 14th. There was something said about the second Thursday of every month we're getting a new war bond. So maybe March 14th, that's going to be the the second Thursday for this month, and maybe we'll see the stratagems come in for the mechs. Maybe we'll see some other things. I'm pretty excited to see that myself. You know, let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are on this. And if you'd like to see some uh, content of me covering some of this, some of these leaks and starting to talk about certain things like that, as with some of these mechs that we have seen, there are a multitude of them that are basically what what looks like almost a copy and paste from what's been in the first game. So. It's almost at one of those moments where we could basically just look back at the first game and see what we might be seeing in the coming future or hoping and possibly letting some putting some word out there for the devs on some things we'd like to see from the first game coming in to the second one. Because there is a lot of things that I'd love to see and that mech was definitely the number one and I am very happy that it's not just the one with the rockets and the minigun that we've got the variety of different mechs this is going to be really exciting to see in the coming future, and I can't wait to get my hands on it. But on that note, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this, and if you'd like to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. If you'd like to see some of this content live, hit that link down in the description. Follow me over at Twitch. We're streaming daily, and on that note, have a good one.